to uh, welcome all of our uh, listeners this morning on our YouTube yeah. channel, our, our watchers of our video YouTube channel, yes. and listeners on the radio this morning, and those that are watching on uh, cable uh, TV 15. Uh, that's New Wave Channel uh, 15, cable TV. We welcome you this morning to the Vine Morning Show. As our friend Laura is with us this morning, and again, good morning, Laura. And good morning. We've got a lot of interesting topics to okay. talk about today, All right? All right. Well, we're just going to move and shake through them, I guess. Yes. And, um, start out here with Second Peter 3. I'd mm-hmm. like to, to read that if I could. Sure. Okay. First of all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming, he promised. Ever since our fathers died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens existed and the earth was formed out of water and by water. And, you know, I was listening to J.D. Frog last night. Oh, my goodness, that guy is so He's so, so good. And he was talking. He really stressed on that deliberately. They forget God. Mm. And I thought, you know, our country has really moved away from God. We, it, it is like we're deliberately leaving him off because we don't want his rules. We don't want his regulations, so we think. But when we move away from him, it's almost like a rebellious teenager. Mm-hmm. I, I want away from you and out from your authority, but we forget that we move away from those benefits. Right. We, we move away from that protection. Mm-hmm. And so America, we know that we've just, just gone down the tubes, and it's just so sad. And, and something that J.D. brought up, it was so interesting. He said, on the 4th of July, I went to a parade, and, and he cried. It was really sad. He says, around the corner come the veterans, and they were marching in the parade. Mm-hmm. And he said, few people, few people bothered themselves with even standing up. Mm. And he said for a while, he was the only one standing in his section and applauding. But then moments later, a big rainbow flag corners and big cheers and shouts and applause just comes. And he said, it just broke my heart. He says, I felt like I was not at a 4th of July parade celebration. He said, I felt like I was at America's funeral. Mm, boy, that's so, that is so true. Mm-hmm. We have gone the opposite way than mm-hmm. where we should be heading. Laura. Yes, yes. And we don't even know um, all the things that we've forgotten. You know, I've mentioned this before, but Rodney said, you know, years ago when we started um, our kids' ministry, he said that, you know, kids would kind of know a little bit about God, and you could tell their parents has mentioned it, but he says, as the years has progressed, he says, this generation coming up barely knows who God mm-hmm. even is, mm-hmm. you know? Exactly. And we just lost so many things. My mother-in-law said the other day, in our neighborhood, um, I guess it was a realtor that came along and put little flags in everybody's yard. And she said there was one flag across the street or down the street from her, I don't remember exactly where, she said it's just laying in the mud. Mm. And she says, it's just so upsetting. She says, I don't know whether to go get it. And, you know, she said, I, I really don't know what to do. But that right there, that's a picture, that's a clip. We don't know how to treat our flag anymore. No. Do no. we? No, we don't. You know, people are burning it. Yes. They're putting it on the ground. They're stepping on it, walking on it, stomping on it. Yes. And it's like, where in the world is this coming from? I know. You know, what What does, you know, and my first think is, oh, God, please forgive these people. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, and he's, and he's, he's got to be looking down, shaking his head. Yes. Mike, you know, my, wow, unbelievable. It, right. it is. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. But it goes to this, you know, we are called to pass it down. Mm. And just like honoring our country and following rules and how you treat our flag, if, if people aren't teaching it to their kids, they're not going to know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I worried about our flag. I thought the lady was going to come back and get the flags or I would have got our flag. I am ashamed to say I really don't know where our flag went. Mm. Now, we have about 10 kids in our yard all the time, and sure. some of them could have taken it. But, but if I would have seen it in the mud, I would have known there is nothing 
uh, out of respect. I told my kids, you burn the flag out of respect if it has touched the ground, mm -hmm. if it's become soiled, if it's torn. Mm -hmm. You know, there's all these rules, and, and we've just forgotten. It doesn't matter anymore. No, no. People forget the flat et etiquette that we were taught when we were growing up. Right. And how, like you said, how to properly dispose of it, and people don't think of it that way. They think it's... It's it's just a piece of cloth, and they can do yeah. what they want to with it. Yeah, it has deep meaning oh, to me, absolutely. and I know it does to you. Yes. And and our generation and older, it has deep meaning. And and like not honoring our veterans, how sad is mm. that? Where have we lost that? We wouldn't have the country that we have today if those yeah. people hadn't have sacrificed. And the ones that got to live are still dealing with bad dreams mm. and and disabilities and and terrible things in their in their mind and in their body and we forget that mm -hmm. i'm ashamed of myself sometimes mm -hmm. i forget that and i forget to pray for for our men and women that are all over the place separated from their family and mark what about the police mm. we mm. disrespect our police we are not no. standing up for our police we are not backing them up we are trashing them we're making fun of them our our nation is disobedient to them we should stand behind our police officers we should respect them we should teach our children to you respect a police officer i tell my kids all the time the policeman is your friend mm -hmm. He is your friend. Don't be afraid of a policeman and never disrespect them because they are there to help us. Mm -hmm. yeah, how would it feel like if we didn't have the, the police forces that we do oh and, and they would step back and say, you know what? Have at it and see what mm -hmm. happens, you right. know, and, 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 and it's come to that in certain areas like in Baltimore. Their police force, they're afraid to go out and enforce any laws yeah. because of the repercussion they're going to get. Right. That's and it's right. causing so much turmoil there. Mm -hmm. You know, it, is it going to happen further in our country? Yes. You know, it, you're exactly right. They do not get the support they deserve. They don't. They need. They need it. And they mm -hmm. need it. And granted, you know, they're human. Some of them make mistakes just like we do. Absolutely. But, mm -hmm. but we're, you know, they're there when you need them. Yes. But, you know, don't turn your back on them because that's who the first person you're going to need in a time of trouble. <laughs> that's the truth. And what are they thinking? We are tying their hands behind their back. And you're right. They're afraid to work. Mm -hmm. They're afraid to do their job, what they're called to do. And, yes, we all make mistakes. But, Mark, my goodness, sometimes they have a, a, a millisecond to mm -hmm. figure out what to do. Exactly. And I, and, and, and I, and I have... Uh, many very good police officer friends mm -hmm. that put their life on their line each and every day. Yes. I've worked around many of them for many years. Yes. And they'll be the first to tell you that if it came down to uh, a situation, they don't want to have to be placed in that situation. Right. Right. But there are times where they have to, but and they're going to go home to their family at yes. night. Yes, right. And, you know, it's like, God has chosen these people to be police officers, to yes. enforce the law, to help those in need. That's right. And we have to show respect. We do not show respect for them anymore. Mm -mm. It's, you know, it's, 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 a really, it's really a shame that they're mm -hmm. put, that they're not held to the higher standards by the public that they once were. I agree. I agree. And, you know, when I watch these riots on television, and I really didn't mean to go here with all this, but, but it just seems to be flowing. But you see them throwing things, and I'm just like, oh, my goodness, this is our mm -hmm. policeman. What are you doing? Go home. Mm -hmm. Stop mm -hmm. this craziness. These, they're trying to create order. They're trying to help people, and, and you're, you're trying to hurt them. I just... I just, I never, and Mark, this is another thing that, that J.D. said. He said, 10 years ago, if somebody would have told you what is happening today, mm -hmm. wouldn't you have believed them? Oh, my. You know, my. if they would have shown you clips of Baltimore and, mm -hmm. and this problem and, and the Sandy Hook and, and, and the, the recent um, ju um, vote that came down, and it's like, oh, my goodness, would you have believed it? Mm -hmm. And he said, for nine years, for nine years. <laughs> You're good. It. Okay, all right. I, <laughs> yeah, our, I forgot our birthday yeah, card. Our birthday still card's later. still in the way, and I'm a shorty, <laughs> and I can't see what time it is. Um, but yeah, he said nine years ago was when he really started talking about the Lord is coming, our generation. And he said, you know, he says there weren't many saying it. He says, think about it. Even five years ago, were all these preachers saying it? 
And he said, no, but they're all saying it now. And it's true. Oh, yeah. They are. And he said, um, he said, you know, all of these things that's happening and combined with the, the scoffing, you know, the growing numbers of scoffers and mockers and people just come. They're not afraid of God anymore. No, no. Mark, no. I'm, I'm afraid of God. I am too. I mean, what? They're they're not afraid of of our police, and they're certainly not afraid of God. And it's like they just lost for all authority. Mm. It just breaks my heart. But you know, that's another thing Perry Stone was talking about. He, I mean, he's making no bones about it. He, we are in the Lord's return. This generation, we are here. We're it. You know, you know, you're talking about. Look at the things that's going on with the flag, the the, the Confederate flag in the states. Oh yes. Look at the program yes. Dukes of Hazard that's been on forever. Mm-hmm. Yep. Look at uh, there's a there's an issue going on right now, and I won't go. I won't mention the the uh, the country store, but most people know the country store I'm talking about. There's people wanting that name change because it's offensive. Oh, my goodness. And it's okay. been around forever. Forever. Same yes. way with us, a, lo- a, 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 a football team. Oh, my. You know, that logo okay. has been around forever. That the, the, and it's not, they, they, th- they find it offensive. The oh logo, the, the, the meaning behind it, they find it offensive. And it's like, what's going to be next? Mm-hmm. Our, is our flag going to become offensive oh, yes. to our country? Yes. Are they going to want to change what, what our flag? What our country was found on? Are they going to want to change the design of our flag? Ooh, ooh, that I mean, gives we me have chill. to we have to ask ourselves You're this right, question: Mark. What is going to happen next before God comes back? <laughs> before the rapture happens? You are right, and we're so worried about offending people, we don't even care that we're offending God. Mm. Don't we care? We're offending God. We're changing His rules and His regulations and and the things that He's ordained and. How did we forget that? And, and people are thinking, well, you know, God God doesn't understand and under understand all that. That is bull. He knows. <laughs> right. He understands it. He, you know, yeah. that's what's going on. And he sees this and he's saddened by what he sees. Yes, that's absolutely He absolutely true. knows what's going on. He does. And he knows it better. And, you know, like Israel. People turning their back on Israel oh and boycotting Israel. Some of our own churches in the United States are boycotting Israel. And it's like two plus two is still four people. <clears throat> Read your Bible. It says you will get smashed if you do this. You, Mar- The people and the churches that are boycotting and turning their back on hating Israel, they are wrong. They are. Yeah. They are wrong. There is no other way to put it. And I'm not going to dance around the subject. If you don't stand with Israel, you are wrong. And I didn't say it. God said it. And if you don't know it, read your Bible and you'll know it real quick because it's it's very plain. It's very plain. And you got to mm-hmm. ask yourself, why? what has Israel done to our country? They've done nothing but support us absolutely and you know that's god's chosen people that's god's chosen country absolutely and you know chuck misler said that may be why we haven't had any heavy judgment since 9 11 as we have stood with israel Mm -hmm. but now our spokesperson that we voted in is saying otherwise but you know the jews have sent word back we know america you evangelical Christians are still standing mm-hmm. with. That's all we've got left in America That's right. are the evangelical Christians. And they know. And there's been enough preachers that have gone over there and said, <clears throat> we don't like this. We don't stand with it. We can't help it that, you know, the upper in our government um, says what they do say, but we disagree completely. Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad they keep iterating that to Israel because I, for one, want them to know that we still stand with them and always will till my dying day, Mark. Exactly. I will stand with Israel. And, you know, I'm I'm glad we're talking about Israel. There's more and more people that are wanting to go to the Holy Land to experience it. They want to go, and and that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I want to go. We want to go. We want to experience Mm -hmm. that. But more and more people are going and they say, once you go, uh-huh. you get a whole, you, you come back a totally different person. Yes, I believe that. And, you mm-hmm. know, 
and that's why we have to be so strong with Israel. We have to love them. They're just like they're, they're our own. Absolutely. And not turn our back on them because no when we turn our back on Israel, mm-hmm. we're turning our back on God. That's right. That's and right. we have to stand we have to stand strong. We do. We do. We have to contend for the faith. We have to move forward. So. Yeah. Amen. We're going to come back in the All 9 right. o'clock hour. What okay. are we going to talk about when okay. we come back? Well, you know, uh, probably more of the same. I want to talk about some of the um, revelations that different people have had and how they're intertwining and, and some real good quotes that people are saying that, saying that are very thought-provoking. Amen. We need and, to know. You know, with uh, the blood, we've got another blood moon coming. Yes, the fourth we one. Do. 60 yeah. days, Mark. 60 days. We're and I, to, um, yeah. yeah, I saw a calendar, and I'm going to show you this calendar here that I'm, and, and I'll, we'll talk about okay. it, too. Good, good. And when you look at that calendar, it, it gives it gave me cold chills. Okay. And I'll show you this okay. calendar when we come back. Good, all right. Good. And we're heading into nine o'clock this morning with Lauren. We're going to give away a CD next yes. hour as well, and more to come here on this Monday. It's the Vine Morning Show as it continues in the nine o'clock here at Real Life Radio. This is your home for best Christian music. No other name. That is Hillsong Worship here at Real Life Radio 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine. Local Christian radio that is safe for the entire family. Here we are back again on a Monday. It's the Vine Morning Show. I'm Mark along with Laura. Good morning, Laura. Good morning, Mark. You know, we, we've been talking about just all, all kinds of things off the air that's going on and mm-hmm. and that things are just happening at a rapid pace here and, and uh, more and more... Uh, as these events unfold, Laura, you know, you hope and pray that people will pay attention and understand mm-hmm. there's meaning behind yes. each event. Yes, yes. And I'm so glad you said that. You know, Perry was talking about um, how it talks about blood and fire and pillars of smoke. And he said, I did a lot of checking into what's pillars of smoke and it's volcanic action. And he said this many times, if this four blood moon has some deep biblical meaning he says we will see volcanic action and i think the very first blood moon there was volcano going off and we know Mm -hmm. that you know there was like 20 going off and there's like 40 that are active right now and he says it is he says since it is all this volcanic action happening in and during these four blood moons the tetrads it is a sign of the end Mm -hmm. Prophetic crunch time. And, you know, i got to read this to you, too. Um, J.D. Farag was talking about we are on the cusp of the Lord's return. And he said, he said, my son and I were going down the road the other day, and he happened to mention something about the tachometer. Am I saying that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, the tachometer. Okay, and he said, it got me to thinking about Revelation 20 where it said, Behold, I come quickly. And he says, that, that word, uh, quickly, in Greek, comes from the root word is ta- tachos, and that's where we get tachometer. Mm-hmm. And he says it's a measurement, and you don't, you don't, we don't think about all these things if we knew the root words mm-hmm. and the root meanings and where they come to. It makes things snap together, and so this this root Greek word for for quickly is tachos, where we get tachometer. And he says, if you think about, behold, I am coming at a time when things are revving up, when things are moving quickly, when things are happening quickly, like labor pains. Mm-hmm. And Mark, you think about that. Things are revving up. Things are happening so fast. You and I just sit in awe sometimes mm-hmm. at all the things that are coming down the pike so quickly. Oh, my goodness, this is happening so fast. This is mm-hmm. unraveling so quickly. And that's how we know that we are the generation. We are in those times because we're seeing all these things come together. All these things are combining. And I can't tell you how many people, how many pastors, how many friends, even Pastor Jay and I were talking I can't believe how many arrows are pointing to September. Mm -hmm. What does this mean? What is this? Mm -hmm. All these things that are happening. The Pope's supposed to come to the United States in September. We've got all these Illuminati things that are happening, big meetings. We've got CERN that's expecting and hoping to open up a door. To a new dimension. To a new dimension. Mm -hmm. And they're hoping Mm -hmm. in September was the last thing that I heard. And then we have the blood moons. We have the super blood moon being able to be seen by the Jews. Don't we think Mm -hmm. that's a little bit odd? Mm -hmm. And then we just saw the Bethlehem star. 
you know, mm -hmm. all of these things. And, and the Revelation uh, 17, the, the constellation in the stars mm -hmm. is coming in 2017. They're talking about chipping all Americans by 2017. Mm -hmm. We've got all these things that's just rushing together, rushing together. We see all these mockeries and people laughing. And, and even our own president mocked Michelle Bachman mm -hmm. and talked about how he could be, you know, the president that, that ushers in the rapture. I can't remember his exact words but i watched the clip mm -hmm. a couple different times and he was scoffing mm. he was mm. and it hurts my heart mm. you know and so we just have all of these things that's just zooming just fastly and the last count on july 20 or on july 5th was 26 million facebookers now have the rainbow on their page wow. and you know what Paul Kidd, and we're going to have him on our show soon. You and I have spoken about Paul Kidd. Mm -hmm. um, he has the rainbow also, but on his rainbow, he put God's promise. Mm -hmm. And that's right. How can we take God's promise, God's symbol to us that he would never flood the earth again and use it for something that is against his holy word? That's another mockery of God. Shame, Shame on, on us. That's right. Yes. Right. Shame on us That's for, right. for using something of God and turning it. But you know what? And I don't remember where it's at, but woe to us who calls evil good and good evil. Mm -hmm. We are just going down that path just as quick and as fast as we possibly can and with no regard. Mm. Oh, this is progressive. Oh, this is this is a good thing. America's finally becoming enlightened. You know? It's sad. It's just very breaks sad. breaks my heart. Mm. I just want to scream out in the streets, what are you doing, people? What are you doing? And it's people that call themselves Christians, too. Mm -hmm. And you know, Mark, I'm going to say this, and I, I may get some, some hateful comments thrown back at me, but you know, this has really separated the goats from the sheep. It has. Oh, it sure has. I, mean, I agree, hundred percent. It it has. It's like okay, who really means it, and who is really on it, and who is really a Christian, and who is just plain. And I'm thinking, can you be a Christian? Can you really be a true Christian, and uphold some of these things that has been brought to us? Can you really be? And you know what I come to, Mark. If you really are a Christian and you are upholding this, out of ignorance. You must be a baby, immature mm -hmm. Christian. Mm -hmm. Can you think of any other thing, Mark? They, I agree 100%. I like mm -hmm. how you put that because it's exactly right. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with that. You can't be a Christian and agree with what's going on mm -mm. with the Supreme Court decision. No. Yeah, I know people that, that say they're Christians, but they agree with it. You cannot do that. Right. You cannot agree with no. what they have voted on. No. You cannot do that. No, nope. it's totally against God said. It's abomination of the Lord. That's right. Mark and I didn't say it. God's word says we stand on God's holy word. And I don't care what law gets into place. I don't care what your friend says, your neighbor says, or, or this one or that one. God's word is true. It's the truth. It's not going to change. I don't care who says what or who puts what colors here or does this or we light up our uh, White House with whatever we want, a polka dot. It's not going to change God's holy word. And he takes a dim view on what we're doing. And don't think that he doesn't. But, yes, does he love everybody? Do I? Yes. Am yes. I mad at anybody? No. No. I'm not mad. I don't hate anybody. I'm not mad at anybody. I feel sorry for the ones that are blinded but don't fall into that trap don't fall into the worldly trap don't fall into where the world is taking us because the world is taking us in a very wrong bad place and we are going to pour bring judgment down on ourselves if we don't stop in our tracks and you know what mark i really expected a terror attack on the fourth of july i was waiting for it but i believe that the church has finally got off their dusty chair and fallen on their knees mm -hmm. to pray because we've let too many things come down the pike. And I really believe that the Christians are like, that's enough. Mm -hmm. We've had it. We're putting our foot down. We're going to get a voice. We're going to get a backbone again and quit being these spineless, wimply, wimpy, unprayed up and unread up Christians. We've got to dig that Bible out again and dust it off and get into God's holy word and start praying for this nation. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves themselves i will heal their nation i will heal their land we still got time and i i believe judgment
judgment is coming, but maybe it won't come as bad. Maybe it won't be as harsh if we just get on our knees and start praying as nation and quit caving for everything that these few percent of people are pushing us around. Stop letting them push us around because we are standing with God and with us and God, we are the majority every single time. You know, with with yeah, I agree with you so much. You're just giving me cold chills down well, my spine. The Lord. And, and, you know, amen and praise God. And, you know, people people will say, and, and the argument's been going around where, well, you know, I believe this all in love. Well, yeah, we, no, we don't, Christians don't, we, we love everyone. But th- But the thing is, that word, God's word stands true. And we have that to back, to back anybody that would argue the fact. That's right. All you have to do is say it's in the word of God That's and right. find out, show them it's in the word of God. Mm-hmm. And it's up to them to believe it. It's right there written right there in front of them. Right. You know, we have nothing to fear. We stand on the word of God, and that's what we have to continue to do. That's right. And God says over and over, don't be afraid. But if you are a sinner, if you are unsaved, be terrified because bad things are coming like we couldn't even possibly imagine. If you are not right with God, be terrified. That's exactly what you need to be until you get right and get close with God. Because when we get away from God, we can't hear him. Mm. And that's what's wrong with America. Mark, if I move down the hallway and down the stairs, could you hear me? No. No. No, yeah. because I'm too far away. Mm-hmm. And that's where America has moved, is so far away that we cannot hear God's cries. We cannot hear God's words. We don't want it. We're just sticking our hand up, and we're moving the wrong direction. But let me say this one more time. I am not mad at anybody. I don't hate anybody. I love, I don't care what you've done, what you're doing. I just want you to be in heaven. I want you to know God, and I want all the people that you're influencing to know God and God's ways. They are the best ways, and it's not our words. It's straight from the Holy Bible. That's what we Christians are standing on, and it's it's not our choice. It's not our laws. It's not our decision. It has nothing to do with us. I am a nothing, and I tell you that often, Mark. I am a nothing, and I'm okay with that, but we have to proclaim and preach the Word of God. Amen, amen. We're going to come back talk more with Laura here in just a moment as the Vine Morning Show continues on this Monday. It's time right now for Family Minute with Mark Merrill. It's being underwritten by the Tin Shed in Wayne City. Christian music and programming on the... The best Christian music for you and your family. Welcome back to the Vine Morning Show. Here we are with our good friend Laura this morning. Good morning, Laura. Mm, Good morning, Mark. You know... You, you, you feel the Holy Spirit working on you. I, I felt the Holy Spirit this morning. I, I, I feel, a, a, I feel a, a, a definite presence here in this radio okay, studio this amen. morning. All right. And, uh, you know, the, o- the only thing we're doing here is we're not out to offend anybody. No. Mm-mm. That's not the purpose. Mm-mm. The purpose is we're here to help people understand. And we're still understanding, too, yeah. just as much as... We're sitting here talking about it. We want people to understand what is coming to our country. That's what right. is what mm-hmm. is coming, and it's mm-hmm. judgment. It's judgment. You are right, Mark, and I'm so glad that you said that. And, you know, um, I was listening to Perry talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, and he, remember when Abraham said, if you just, if there's just ten righteous men, and God says, yes, you know, if there's ten righteous men, and Perry made this point, and he says, you know, he, he goes to get Lot and his wife and, and his kids and the spouses, and, and he says he says he believed that was the ten. <laughs> and he says, but only four came, and he says, because I believe the other six backslid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and he boy. said, oh, I'm going to get some hate mail over sure. this one. But, you know, you think about it. They didn't want to come. Mm-hmm. They liked the trash they were living in. And we know there was sexual immorality in Sodom and Gomorrah like craziness. And even Lot's wife looked back. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, you know, you could speculate, why did she look back? You know, was she sad? Was she thinking about her kids left behind or, or the spouses or, you know, what was she thinking? Or did she just long 
for that. I I couldn't say for sure, but you know, he said I'm going to take a lot of a lot of flack for the things that I've been saying. But he said, um, he said this, and boy, he got uh, he got really revved up. He says you're looking at a guy who is 56 years old, and he doesn't give a rip what you think. Mm. And I thought that was pretty bold. And he says, I'm going to have to answer to God. And he says, I don't have to be popular, but I have to be obedient. Mm -hmm. And he says, I don't want to stand before God and God say, you know, Perry, you you did good, but you didn't speak the truth on this issue. And you didn't stand up for this issue because you were too afraid. You wanted to stay on TV. You wanted the money to build your youth center. You wanted offerings, um, you know, to, to do the things that you feel the need to do. And you were too afraid to do it. And how many preachers are too afraid to stand up and tell the truth. You know, one of my buddies, I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it. She said that uh, a friend of hers, and I'm not going to say what town this is in, has gone to this church for years, living a very immoral lifestyle Mm. and um, has children living married to the opposite sex, even has children, adopted children and has been in this church for years and years and years. Okay, there's two ways this could happen, all right? Either that preacher is not preaching. How can you sit in a church year after year after year and not be convicted to change, okay? The only thing that I can think of is that your conscience has been so seared, so sealed, that nothing is penetrating you, or that pastor is not preaching the word. Mm-hmm. Two, can you think of any other reasons no, how those, that could happen? No, those are the those are the only reasons I can think of, and I can think of two people that that are in the same situation, uh-huh. and uh, you know, mm-hmm. I, I can see that, and it makes you wonder. And they go to church every Sunday, and mm-hmm. it's like. How is that church allowing that to happen? That's right. That's right. And Rodney just gets up and he just preaches it. I mean, he's got the guts and he just says it. And I am so proud of him when he does this. But I'm thinking how many churches wouldn't do that because they're afraid they'd run people off. Mm -hmm. You know what? We are caught. We have to. We can't make... Uh, people living a sinful, I mean, purposefully sinful. Right. You know, there are two different things. There's falling into temptation and pulling yourself back out of it. Mm-hmm. That's one thing. But out and out living a life that is totally against what God says. Can you do that Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and still show up like it's no big deal? He's like, I want these people to get it right or get out. Hmm. And he's he's pretty firm about that. Now, you know, I've told you before, I'm kind of a marshmallow in some ways. I think we need to give people an opportunity sure. to change. But years and years and years, if you've not gotten it in years and years and years, are you going to get it? You know, I think we need to think, can, can people stand to listen to us, Mark, that aren't saved, that aren't living a life? You know, are we convicting them? I hope so. Mm-hmm. We're called to. Somebody convicted me. People convict me all the time. Mm. Oh, I've yeah. Got it. I've got to get it between the ditches many times. Exactly. You know, we're all getting mm. off track. But if you willfully just thumb your nose at God, and, and that's an iniquity, just thumb your you know it's wrong, and you're just going to do it anyway. I don't care what you said, God. I'm going to do it anyway. This just is how it is. You know, and you got to ask yourself, too, if we're making people mad, yeah. By what we're saying, yeah. is that the Holy Spirit working on them? That's I would say point. yes. That's a yes, yes. But why, 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 why get mad over something that we're only talking about because that's what the Bible says? Right, absolutely. And are we telling people this for us? We want you to get saved. We want you to get right with God. If you are living in sin, you are living in sin. Sin separates us from God. And, you know, it talks about the sexually immoral will not enter the kingdom. Of, it says lots of things. I mean, the murders, there's just this terrible list, you know. And, and once were you, once was I, Mark. Mm-hmm. But we, by the grace of God, are moving from that lifestyle that we used to live, and we've got to pull our brothers out of it. This is not a hate speech. Mm-mm, no. Mark, it's not hate speech at all. And, and this ruling is not love. That just makes me want to bite through a nail. It makes me so mad. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. We just paint a pretty picture on it and put a few flowers around the word and, and, and love, love. 
crime and he sakes that has nothing to do that is absolutely like you said an abomination it's moving from god's original intent his original design and we can't flower it up and make it all beautiful well we are all going to stand before the mighty king we're going to be at at the great white throne if we're um unsaved mm. and we're going to be at the judgment seat if we are saved and i may have that just a little bit i think it's called the judgment seat mm. Um, but anyhow, do you, which which line do you want to stand in, Mark? And are we helping these people stand in the great white throne of judgment? If we pat them on the back and, oh, it's all right, honey. God's, God's a God of love. God forgives. Well, my God's a God of wrath, and my God sends judgment, and my God will put you back between those ditches when you need to be. My God is a just God, though. And he is a God of love, but where God never does anything. And my sister and I were just talking about this last night. Where is it all these people? Oh, God would never do that. Oh, God wouldn't do that. God is God is love. God. Yes, he would. Mm -hmm. Yes, he would. He disciplines. He chastens those whom he loves. God has to send judgment to us. And I think it was Billy Graham that, that coined the statement. He'll have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah if he doesn't do anything to the United States of America. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amen. That's good. Mm -hmm. and, and that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Because it's Sodom and Gomorrah right now here in America. No different. No different. Mm -hmm. No different whatsoever. All right. We're going to come back and talk with Laura Moore here on the Vine Morning Show. The best Christian music for you and your family. And welcome back to the Vine Morning Show. Here we are on this this uh, beautiful and hot Monday morning, mm -hmm. Laura. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Hey, we had a winner of the uh, Jesus Culture oh, yeah. CD this yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bobby from Fairfield called in. Good. And uh, the question was, Laura, and uh, we, we've had this one before. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time ago, and I thought, ah, let's bring it up for a Monday. It, it's a cute one. A man rode into town on Tuesday and left two days later on Tuesday. How is this possible? Mm hmm well, guess what? He rode in on a horse named Tuesday. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, so congratulations to Bobby, and thanks for listening and playing along this morning. You're going to like the CD, Bobby, mm -hmm. by Jesus Culture. And it's a great worship CD. You're going to like it. Great one. So, again, congratulations to Bobby out of Fairfield this morning for winning on the Vine Morning Show. And, mm -hmm. You know, we've been talking about a lot of things today, Laura, and, and uh, you know, a lot of serious things. And, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. What scares me is, you know, again, I, I want to reiterate that we're not out to, to make enemies. We're not out no. for people to hate us. We're not out for people to, you know, dislike us. Mm -hmm. You know, we're out, we're only, we're only talking to not only educate us further, mm -hmm. but to let everyone know that, hey, look, our country is going to be judged That's right. by God. There's just so many things going on right mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. that you got to wonder, when is that eastern sky going to split? That's exactly right. And, you know, it's true, Mark, and there's too many of them saying exactly the same thing. And, you know, ones that I'm listening to um, have, have predicted things before. Uh, did you know Perry Stone had a vision or a dream about 9-11 too? Uh, I heard that, yes. I yes. did not know, or I had forgotten it. So Perry Stone, he says, we even wrote, drew pictures in 1999, My con and congregation saw we had five tornadoes around the World Trade Center, mm. and it was shrouded in black, is how he put it. Okay, him, all right, David Wilkerson saw it, Jim Baker saw it. Rick Wiles saw it. He said he knew that he was supposed to proclaim judgment was coming on 9-11. He said, I didn't even know what I was saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got four people right there, and that's just the ones that I can think of off the top of my head, that saw 9-11 before it happened. Wow. And now you've got Jim Baker. You know, he saw the Japan tragedy. He saw um, New Orleans underwater two months before it happened. Um, Rick Wiles is seeing fires. David Wilkerson, he's seeing fires in the future. David Wilkerson passed away, but he has this this huge vision that he had for America. 
Didn't he have some? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, and I don't mean to interrupt you here. Oh, no, please do. But did he see something back in 1965? Was it him or was it someone else? You know, the vision that I know of with David Wilkerson was 1973. It was over 40 years ago that he saw, and he saw great persecution and like a thousand fires in New York and fires all over this nation and a hydrogen holocaust. Oh, my. Is what he called Mm. it. Lots of things. Yeah, Wilkerson's pretty profound. You know, and, 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 and not to t- get off the train of thought here, but mm-hmm. something that just occurred on the 4th of July that a Russian bomber flew 35 miles off the coast of California, <gasps> and it was intercepted by U.S. fighter jets. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that, oh that, that actually happened, and then the Russian president called our president and wished him a happy 4th of July. Oh, my goodness. Now, how odd is that? That's bizarre. But that no. actually happened. There was fighter jets intercepted this Russian Russian bomber 35 miles off the coast of California. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my. And see? And there's tension between Russia and the United States Absolutely. Right now. And, you know, Perry Stone's been having this reoccurring dream about this huge tsunami taking place in California. He said on the West Coast, and he said, and on the East Coast, which he says I thought was a little strange. But he says I keep having Having this dream over and over and over again, and these are the people that I want to I want to look to. What's happening? What's happening now? What's getting ready to happen? Because they've been told of things before that came about, and like John Paul Jackson, he was told of things before they happened. Uh, the Challenger, mm-hmm. and he even called NASA, and they're like, "Oh, so, you know, Mr. Jackson, they blew that off, blew it off, and then it blows up the next day." And we got to watch and listen to these people because in Amos it says, God does nothing without first warning the prophets. These prophets are telling us destruction is coming, destruction is coming. And another thing that I wanted to read to all of us, um, I thought this was really good if I can find it. Some of these, um, here it is, pastors are saying really profound statements. Um, John Shorey says, I would rather be ready and wrong than to be wrong and not be ready. Wow. That's pretty good. Yeah, that is yeah. good. I, I, I would rather be wrong. You oh, know, yeah. my mom tells me all those water bottles you have out in the garage, you're going to pour them out someday. And I said, I hope so. Yeah. I hope I do. Yeah. Yeah. But in case I don't, you'll probably be one of the people drinking on them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not that she's a scoffer. Because sure. She, she sure. does prepare a little bit, too. Um, Jim Baker says, I believe this 4th of July will be the last 4th of July as we know it. He said for this past year. This, yeah, this, this last year, one that we had will be the last one that we know of wow. as we've always known it. Um, money sitting in the bank is not as wise as money sitting in food, Tom Horn. Dr. Tom mm. Horn said that. Well, you know, look at what happened in Greece just yes, recently. Yes, yes, And I can't remember who said this. What's happening to Greece will soon be us. Yeah, they, they're saying uh, Greece, and then maybe Mexico is going to follow in suit next. And then oh, maybe, yeah, you know. so weird you would say that. Mm-hmm. I had this up here. As soon as the first country falls, America, get your money out of the bank. This is what David Wilkerson said, because Brazil and Mexico will be next, and then we'll soon fall. <gasps> I didn't know anything mm-hmm. about that. Oh, my mm-hmm. goodness. That's, I had that right on this paper. That is wow. so bizarre. Wow. These people are trying to warn us. They're trying to tell us. And most people are not listening. They're not going to listen, but you've been warned Mm. over and over. And what we have to do is keep planting the seeds, keep warning people, keep telling people, and get prepared. But most of all, get right with God. Get your heart right with God. Yeah, amen, amen. That's the whole purpose. That's what we want everyone to do. Yes, we do. You know, watch, watch, be watchful what goes on in our country. News, watch the news. And some news is not reported like it should be. Yes. But read, just trying to follow along, see what's happening right. in the country and then put two and two together and study the Bible and look more into the Bible. Look yes. at certain scriptures. Yes. There's ways you can find, okay, why is this taking place? Google it yes. and it can direct you to where you need to go if you have questions on where not to look. That's right. And you know, the whys aren't looking right in front of us. Looking right in front of us, we have plenty. We have plenty mm-hmm. of wheat, plenty of barley, plenty of steaks. We have plenty of everything. But you know, the watchman is the one that has the eagle's eye that's looking far into the future. That's looking far ahead and they're adding these things up like we've talked about. The bees are disappearing, and, and the, the floods are going to cause lack of food, and the droughts are going to cause lack of food, and, and all these things are lining up. And But, you know, Joseph's ministry must have seemed very bizarre 
So we've got plenty, Joseph. What do you mean, store up? Right. I've been given a warning from God through Pharaoh's dream that we have got to do this. And people probably laughed and scoffed at him and thought he was a nutcase. We've got more than we could even possibly eat. Mm. But thank God he did because he saved the lives of thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Right. You know, when it came to that time. So. Oh, wow. Amen. But wow. anyhow, so. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, we're yeah. going to come back and wrap it up here in a okay. moment. Okay. All but, right. But your program, Keeping Watch, is coming up right okay. here. And it's coming up right here at The Vine. We encourage everyone to stay tuned for Laura's program right here at Real Life Radio. Real Life Radio is thankful for the financial part. Well, as we're getting ready to wrap things up this morning here on the Vine Morning Show, it's great to have Laura in with us this morning. And Laura, I tell you, <laughs> Ty, I don't know. It seems like that clock goes on fast forward when you when we're together on Mondays. It does. It's a bunch of fun, and, and it's hard work, but we love it. <laughs> well, the whole thing is, and, and again, all we want to do is just, uh, we're just messengers. Yes. And uh, that's our job as Christians is, is to be messengers. And, you know, it, we're still understanding it and learning every day. every day. It's a learning process for each and every one of us. Mm-hmm. And we have to be prepared. We do. We do. And, and we, we say this to encourage and to exhort and, and to lift you up and to challenge you in your own life. Who are those people that's watching you, that's looking at you? Who can you talk to? Who's on your Facebook mm-hmm. that's not on ours that you can witness to? And you may be the only witness those people have. And, you know, Mark and I have, have discussed, too, of um, friends that are on our Facebook that are on opposite ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have to know that sometimes we're the only Jesus that people get. That's right. And standing up on Facebook, my sister says sometimes I stand up on Facebook and it makes me shudder. It makes me sick to my stomach. It makes me worse. She gets blasted. Mm -hmm. I mean, blasted. I said, how did you get all of these people that that are so against what you're thinking? She says, there was five years that I wasn't serving God, and I collected a lot of ungodly people. No. I'll just put it that way. Right. She said, I did, and she says, I hate it, and I always feel bad, and I feel very guilty for that five years that I was really off track. But in another way, it's given her this window. It's given her this platform in front of a whole bunch of people that maybe have never learned, maybe have never heard. A lot of people don't know. Mm-hmm. They don't know God's word. Mm-hmm. They just think we're being stiff-necked and unreasonable, and and they just think we're being mean. We're not being no, mean. No. We want to see all of you to spend eternity with us. We don't wish you hell like you probably wish us. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> you know, no, but that's so many true. Many of though. them, not yeah. everybody. Sure, sure. But you know, you don't you don't see our perspective. Right. We want the best for you. Laura, thanks for coming in today, and I look forward to next Monday. Already looking forward to Monday. Me too. Thank you. Hey, Jenny's back. She's going to have the overflow next hour. She'll be in from 10 to 2. And uh, Randy will have the afternoon matinee from 2 to 6. Brian with Soul Shine on a Monday at 6 tonight. Don't forget the teaching of God's Word with Pastor Shannon Hinkle from the Rock Community Church in Fairfield. That's at 8 o'clock tonight. Always remember to read Scripture daily and stay focused on God and His Word. (laughs) 